So, hi, I'm, I'm Derek, and I like questions a lot. They are an incredibly useful tool in, in the work that I do. Um, if, we can, if we can take all of our loose thinking and put it in the form of a question, it helps, it helps everything. It makes it a lot easier to figure out what we're trying to find. Uh, so, for example, on my radio show and podcast, every episode, the title of the show is a question, and that's where we start, and we blast off from there. So, today, my question is this. What is the value of curiosity? This is a tough question to answer because we don't usually think of curiosity in that way as something that has value or even something that we can measure. We usually think about curiosity as something that's playful and whimsical. Curiosity is fun, but we, we don't think about the long-term effect that it has on our, on our lives. So what is the value of curiosity? Uh, I think it's a lot. I think, stick with me on this, I think curiosity is the key to finding the meaning of life. That's a lot of value, so stick with me. Here's my, here's my proof. Take any person who has, has found real meaning in their life. They know what their passion is, they know what wakes them up in the morning, they know who they are and what's important to them, and they've found joy in that. And when you, when you talk to them, when you ask them about this, what made you become a teacher or an artist or a religious leader, and it doesn't even have to be their job, it can be, it can be anything that, that pulls at them in their life. You might be asking, uh, you might be asking them, why do you run marathons? Or why do you meditate? Or how did you get involved in this cause? Or how did you meet the love of your life? Um, whatever it is, as they, as they hold up this thing that they value, if you, if you pull the thread out of this idea and slowly follow their life backwards in time, you can, you can see how all of this began. Because what's What's so meaningful in their life now? What, what gives their life its meaning? These monumental things. Now, that's what it is. But before that, it was, it was something smaller. It was something they were passionate about. And before it was something that they were passionate about, it was something smaller. It was something that interested them. And before it was something that interested them, it was something smaller. It was just something that they had on their mind. And we can follow this all the way back, even to a time when they didn't even know this thing existed. And then one day, something or somebody caught their attention, made them say, wow, pulled them in to something new. And it changed the rest of what happened. That is curiosity. And it can completely change the road that you're on. So if you think in your own life about what your passion is, whatever it is you love, whoever you love, if you close your eyes, this will be fun, if you close your eyes and think back to the moment that you first encountered it, sometimes that's even hard to do, to really even remember what that was like, because that moment is so tiny and fragile. But think about what would have happened if you hadn't paid attention. It could have just as easily never happened that's terrifying, so you can open your eyes, because that is shocking to when we see it that way, right? Everything in our, in our lives that gives us meaning, these huge pillars of who we are, are just precariously balanced on these tiny, fragile moments. But luckily, we got curious. We hung on to those moments. And if you haven't found this kind of life-defining passion in your life yet, that's okay. You will. You will. All you have to do is just listen to that internal voice when it suddenly says, oh, that's interesting. I, I want to know, I want to know more about that. And that's how all of the rest of it starts. So, we find the meaning of life. We find the meaning of our own lives by just adding more curiosity into our lives, right? There's a problem here. I work with curiosity a lot, and it is incredibly difficult to work with. It is uh, unpredictable. It is impossible to control. 
I mean, you can't like, make a person curious any more than you can make a person hungry. But you can show a person lots of pictures of delicious food. You can tell them stories about amazing restaurants and really incredible things to eat. You can make them dinner. And then you can hope that they are ready to be hungry. The same is true of curiosity. You can't force it. All you can do is invite it in. And so that's what I do in my work, in my radio shows, in art installations, in these kooky, interactive experiences that I do out in the world. They're all invitations for people to practice being curious about small, random things so that we're ready when the big things come along, the big things that will completely change our lives. I want to tell you a story about um, how curiosity can change a life. And so we can see the value of what, a, what curiosity can do. And uh, it's a story that you probably already know, but I think we've been seeing it wrong this whole time. And this is kind of a left turn here, so hang with me. Um, there's an ancient Greek story called the Odyssey. And it was written by Homer. It's, uh, it's after the Trojan War and the main character Odysseus and all of his crew, they just want to go home. And the Odyssey is their adventures with uh, unexpected dangers and these mythical creatures all along the way. It was written about 3,000 years ago and it is a pillar of Western literature. You know it, whether you've read it or not, it's a part of, it's a part of our world. Uh, I think we've been getting this story wrong this whole time. And don't feel bad, because by all, I mean all of humanity for the past 3,000 years, we've missed the point of the story. But that <laughs> changes right now. We're going we're gonna to fix this. It's not, a, it's not a story about a hero, because that's what a lot of people say. They point to Odysseus and they say, he's a hero, and here are his traits. He's, he's brave, he's uh, strong, he's clever, cunning is the word that they use a lot. These are the traits of a hero, and this is the hero's journey. I don't think this is a story about how to be a hero. I think this is a story about how to be curious. And why this matters is because what we focus on in a story has a deep effect on what we learn from it. This isn't a story about a hero. This is a story about someone who's being curious. Here's my proof. One of the most famous parts in the story, the, the sailors and Odysseus and all his men, they have to sail past the sirens, you know, these monsters, but they sing these beautiful sounds and they lure sailors to their death. So Odysseus has all of his men fill their ears with beeswax. They, as they sail past, they won't hear the sounds, they won't be seduced, no crashing the ships. So he does this with all his men, but not himself. He doesn't fill his ears with beeswax. Instead, he's tied to the mast of the ship. So they sail past safely, and the whole time Odysseus is, is there writhing in agony, being seduced by these sounds that he hears. That is a beautiful image, but let's do a little bit of critical thinking here for a second. That is a crazy plan. <laughs> if we really think about this, there is no tactical advantage to doing this. I mean, think about this. What naval campaign, successful one, in history have you ever heard of that starts with step one, tie the captain to the mast? <laughs> it doesn't exist. It is a terrible idea. And he's not doing this because he's helping his men. This doesn't make them safe. He's not being heroic. He's not saving anybody. He does this because he's curious. He wants to hear the sound, and he wants to survive. And because he does this, he is the only person who's able to describe what he heard. When we start thinking about this, this just this story, and start seeing this, this idea of curiosity, we notice it's throughout the whole story. One of my favorite moments, the ships, there's 12 of them at the time, they're sailing past this island that is rumored to be the home of giants. It's late at night, there's no wind, so they decide to just creep into the, the harbor and rest for the night. They drop anchor safely away from the shore, and they, and they rest. All of them except Odysseus and his boat, and the, the 12th boat. And, and he's curious. He wants to know if giants really exist. So he and the men on his ship sail past that safe harbor all the way around to the shore. 
and they get out and they go exploring. They can't resist. They want to know if there are giants. There are giants. And the giants wake up and they see the ships out in the harbor and they grab these boulders from the tops of the mountains. They throw them out, smash all of the boats. They spear all of the men like they're tiny little fish. Everybody dies. Except Odysseus and his men who could not resist going exploring. Curiosity literally saves their life. The whole story is filled with, with curiosity. It's really a parable about how to think about curiosity. And if we're at this point now where we're saying, okay, curiosity is good, the story tells us there's more to it than that. It's not always good. The first day of their adventure, the first day that they're leaving uh, Troy after, after the war, day one, and uh, the wind god, uh, Aeolus, as a favor, collects all of the ill winds, stuffs them into a bag, seals it up, and gives it to Odysseus and his men. So it's smooth sailing, they get home, in 10 days. By the ninth day that they're out at sea, the men have gotten curious. What's in that bag? They can see Ithaca on the horizon, their home. They're that close, but they can't resist. What's in the bag? What's in the bag? So they, of course, they open the bag. All the ill winds come out, and it pushes them back out to sea. What should have taken 10 days, it takes 10 years for them to get home. So curiosity doesn't always help us out. It can, also, it can also get us into trouble. And what finally gets Odysseus home in the end? Sorry, he gets home. Spoiler alert. So, actually, I'm not sorry at all. You've had 3,000 years to read this. That's on you if you don't know. Okay. He gets home. And what finally gets him home it's not, it's not his bravery, it's not his strength, it's not his cunning. After 10 years, none of those things have worked. All of his men at this point have died or they're lost. All of his ships have been destroyed. He, uh, he almost drowns and he washes up on the shore of this foreign land, lifeless. And uh, the people there, they, they pick him up. They feed him, they clothe him, they nurse him back to health. And when they find out that he wants to go home, they just take him home. The thing that he's been trying to do for 10 years, and they just give it to him. No problem. What do they want in return? They want to hear his story. His story has value because he was curious. He now has a story that helps him get the thing that he wants. So curiosity, the thing that blew him out to sea for 10 years, is the very same thing that ultimately got him what he wanted. If you're feeling, feeling a little in, uneasy about curiosity right now, I totally get it. Um, the Odyssey is a deeply conflicted story, and there are many ways to think about its meaning. The same is true of curiosity. So if you're asking yourself some questions now, is, is, curiosity, is curiosity dangerous or is it helpful? Is curiosity distracting or is it something that gives us focus? Is curiosity something that pulls us away from or towards the people and the things that we love? The answer is yes. <laughs> it is all of these things. And that means curiosity is risky. By definition, it's risky because curiosity pulls us into the unknown. Like a magnet, it pulls us into our lives. And life is risky. The, uh, the hidden message in the Odyssey is the same one that I tell people all the time with my work. Your life is your adventure. And how you lean into it makes a difference to the people around you who want to hear your stories, the people who want to help you live those stories. It makes a difference. So what is the value of curiosity? What is the value of finding the meaning of life? I mean, it's just a question, but questions often help us find 
what we're looking for. And, uh, and as a side, if, if we've missed this message staring us in the face for the past 3,000 years, then what other discoveries are waiting for you just below the surface, just waiting for you to dig in? So be curious and let me know what you find out. Thank you.